Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's emotion of transcendental madness in separation from Krishna is very deep and mysterious. Even though one is very advanced and learned, he cannot understand it. Mm. Just then, but very advanced. Microphone. It's <clears throat> written not only learned, but he also very advanced. It's so mysterious, mm. so deep. <laughs> okay. Verse 6. How can one describe unfathomable subject matters? It is possible only if Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives the capability. So mercy, by mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 7. Svarupa Damodara Goswami and Raghunata Dasa Goswami, our old friends from the Lapa Kusmanjari and other texts, recorded all these transcendental activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in their notebooks. Verse 8. In those days, Svarupa Damudara and Raghunata Dasa Goswami lived with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whereas all other commentators lived far away from him. This is interesting. For example, if someone want to write the biography of Sadhu Maharaj, and someone who has stayed far away, living in you know, like Europe, mm -hmm. and he want to write the biography of Sadhu Maharaj, it is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. But if stay with Sadhu Maharaj for many years, he, he knows many stories and pastime and behavior. That person could write this pastime. This mentioned Sudarpa Damodara Raghunath Das Goswami lived with Sri Chaitanya for many years. I think Sudarpa Damodara is like, uh, I don't know how many, but probably six. 18, maybe he lived from 16 years to 18 years with, yeah, maybe, if from Navri, maybe more. Then maybe more than, you know, 20, maybe 30, I don't know, I'm not sure. And Raghunath Das Goswami is not lived with Puri Chaitanya, but in, I think Puri, he lived maybe about 11 years. Probably, maybe mm -hmm. 10, 11, something like that. I know that Mahaprabhu spent in Puri 18 years. Yeah. At which point of time, Laragunath is came, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, at least 10, 11 years. Because Mahaprabhu came, he came, he came from Puri to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. not from the beginning. Stayed already, mm. and then he came to Shinpu. Yeah, maybe more, now. Where uh, when I met him, in, after some years, he came to Puri. So maybe eleven, eight years, it's more or less. Yeah, you know something like that. And also in Navadvi time, Raghunath Das was, uh, he used to visit Advaita Charya. Why? Because Advaita Charya. Uh, Advaitacharya and Raghunath Das Goswami is father and uncle. They are very close mm -hmm. because they are give so much donation to Advaitacharya. So, and Advaitacharya and Advaitacharya likes Raghunath. So, at that time, he met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at least a few times. Mm -hmm. So, and then he loves Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has desire to join Mahaprabhu's movement. So, anyway, this is. Uh, so, so crossed with Swarpa Damodar and Raghunath Das Goswami. Mm. This we can say. Verse 9. These two great personalities 
Swarupa Damodara and Raghunath Das Goswami recorded the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu moment by moment. They described these activities briefly as well as elaborately in their notebooks. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if I will read these notes, for me it will be not obvious how Mahaprabhu living in this day in Puri. Mm -hmm. But for Raisika Vaishnava, this even uh, uh, how to say short notes will say so many things. He will find the mood and understand what he's what he's feeling in this day. Why in this day Swarpadamandar pronounced this verse or that song, he singing this song. Like our Guru Shri Gurudev, when we, we are, uh, visited uh, Madanga Baba in Radakunda, he asked me what he spoke, what the Harikata we spoke, and I repeated. And he was so, he is enjoying and laughing so much. I couldn't understand why. And he, after explained his mood and so many things, he just from my short uh, uh, um, story, what I repeated, short narration. Rasika Vaishnava can understand and go more deeply in the mood of Rasika Vaishnava. Yes. And Prabhupada comments, the future reference, we should remember that Swarupa Damodara Goswami recorded the pastimes briefly, whereas Raghunatha Das Goswami recorded them elaborately. These two great personalities simply recorded the facts. They did not create any descriptive literary embellishments of flowers. Mm. <coughs> Verse 10, Swarupa Damodara wrote short notes, whereas Raghunatha Das Goswami wrote elaborate descriptions. I shall now describe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities more elaborately, as if fluffing out compressed katan. And Prabhupada mentions, Panjitika means further explanations of a subject. Writing such explanations is likened here to the process of fluffing out cotton. Verse 11. Please hear faithfully the description of Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic emotions. Thus you will come to know of his ecstatic love, and ultimately you will achieve love of Godhead. So here we have increasing love and devotion through hearing, through Samkirtan, one of the, one of the tools of bhakti that we're instructed to use. Mm -hmm. Samkirtan makes love increase, mm -hmm. just to the point where we achieve love of Bhagavan. Verse 12. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt separation from Krishna, his condition exactly corresponded to that of the gopis in the Rindavan after Krishna's departure for Mathura. Verse 13. The lamentation of Srimati Radharani when Uddhava visited Vrindavan, gradually became a feature of Sri Ma Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's transcendental madness. So the Leela of Uddhava in Vrindavan saddens the Radharani, and that becomes a part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's total personality. The experience of that Leela becomes part of the emotional makeup of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His transcendental madness, as, mm. as it's said. Verse 14. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's emotions exactly correspond to those of Srimati Radharani when she met Uddhava. Quite remarkable. So the emotions of Radharani become the emotions of 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord always conceived of himself in her position and sometimes thought of that he was Srimati Radharani herself. <coughs> so it tells how strongly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is really in the mood of Radharani. <laughs> Always conceived of, oh, sorry, he always conceived of himself in her position. It's one thing, and sometimes thought what he was Sri Madhuradharani herself. Hmm. It's like he's going deep. He forgets that he was himself. <laughs> yes. So Prabhupada, yes. Your emotions were so strong as a current, as a wave, it taken and not alone to go away. And yeah. in his emotions, he becomes forget who he is. And now he's thinking, I am. It's like some person coming to theater. And he look in his theater, and main hero or heroine acting and shown emotion. And because of a uh, writer who was a genius, the uh, viewers forgetting themselves what they in theater they thinking i am i'm feeling this ah. mm. <laughs> yes like the <laughs> complete identification with, yeah. uh, with the actor yes so then Prabhupada comments in the purport srila bhakti siddhanta sarasvati takura explains that the purport of the word abhimana or self-conception, this is the translation, the way he understood himself, is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought himself to be in the position of Sri Mati Radhirani and was always ready to render Krishna service in that way. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, it's a little bit crazy, right? So one part of him wants to run, render service to the other part of him. Prabhupada continues, he assumed, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu assumed the complexion and emotions of Srimati Radharani and remained in that status. He never assumed the complexion or the status of Krishna. Of course, Krishna wanted to experience the role of Srimati Radharani. That is the original cause of his assuming the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, pure Vaishnavas never disturb Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's conception of being Srimati Radharani. Unfortunately, at the present time, a group of so-called devotees maintain that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the enjoyer and that they are enjoyers as well. So they drop the whole mood of service, of seva. They drop the mood of Radharani and become purely Krishna. This group that Prabhupada is criticizing. They have actually deviated, he says, from devotional service to the Lord. They've dropped the Radharani um, part of the identity, this part that's so very important for us. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested himself to show that, cult that cultivation of love for Krishna in separation is the easiest way of success for all living entities. And also, it's important that Shogunai, so much stress, I remember, for the stress for meeting. For us, it's so important to understand the reasons of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He told, if you will see Krishna in him, you'll be in Sanchari. Only then you will see. Sanchari, Bob. So yeah. explain. So explain. Moving on the yes. focus. Sanchari not means not. Not concentrating on Srimati Radhika Smut in Mahaprabhu. This is Sanchari. It's giving desire to enjoy. 
to seek enjoyment here yeah, and there yeah. and everywhere. To yes. run and jump. Yeah. Here and there for enjoyment. Always how to say some passion, some disturbance uh -huh. in mind. But to receive fixation on your own nature, be natural, mm -hmm. you must see in, in Sri Shri Mahru, mood of Sri Mati Radhika and understand in this way, to see him in this way. It is only a way to receive his gift. Unata Ujwala Rasa. Yeah. So Gurudev is teaching us to try to assume Stai Bhav and that from the mood, like uh, Radha Charan says, the, from the mood of Radharani, focusing mm -hmm. on the service mm -hmm. of divine love. Wow. This is Stai Bhav. And if we drop the portion of Radharani, like Prabhupada says, some devotees are doing wrongly, then we become unstable. We lose our stai bhav. We become sancha bhav. Not only stai, you know, not only doing stai bhava, not only using sancha but this is the kind of, this is a kind of, how to say, so-called devotee is not that all devotee mm -hmm. because devotee means we are servant of Lord or dasi of Radharani. But here mentioned, you know, lo, yeah, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoy, uh, we are enjoy, uh, this is, we say, sah Sahaja. You know, mixing material thing and spiritual thing. And this is not, uh, we, you know, we cannot say they are devotee in very strict sense because they are, they don't understand we are servant of the Lord, we are Dasi of Radha. They don't understand. This is, is not Sanchari. This is kind of, you know, we say Appa Sampradaya, hmm. kind of deviate devotee. This is Bhakti Bino Thakur mentioned that certain kind of <laughs> deviate devotee is one kind of like this. Hmm. Um, Prabhupada continues, despite this fact, that there are these, this, 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 this proof that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, appeared in order to embody the mood of Radharani. Despite this fact, there are some theosophists. A theosophist is someone who preaches fake religion. So sophist is fake and theo is theology, theo religion. They declare that because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, such cultivation of pleasure is easy for him, but difficult for the living entity. And that one can therefore approach Krishna in any way he likes. To nullify this idea, to cancel this idea, Prabhupada says, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu demonstrated practically how one can achieve love for Krishna by adopting Srimati Radhirani's mood in separation for Krishna. In other words, he doesn't only talk about it, this is what he lived too during his life. And also this is, this is interesting. So Mah uh, Mahaprabhu can do can become Radharani's mood because uh, Mahaprabhu's combination of you know uh, Krishna and uh, Radharani, but uh, we cannot uh, we cannot adopting uh, it is difficult to adopt Shrimati Radharani mood in separation from Krishna uh, because uh, we are jiva we cannot become Radharani. So therefore, we can follow uh, the one specific gopi or saki or manjari. Manjari is raga. This is raga anuga. Like uh, original person, like Larita, Bishaka, even in, maybe including Radharan, and this, they are like a ragatomika. But we cannot become ragatomika. We, we can only follow the footstep. That is, that is our position. Hmm. 
15. Please don't hesitate, everybody, to, to comment or to question or anything you like. It's very nice, of course, if you do that. You're among friends. Yes. Or actually, you're among brothers and sisters. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Verse 15, such is the state of transcendental madness. Why is it difficult to understand? When one is highly elevated in love of Krishna, he becomes transcendentally mad and talks like a madman. And now is a quotation from Ujvala Nilamani of Rupa Goswami. When the ecstatic emotion of enchantment gradually progresses, it becomes similar to bewilderment, beautiful word, astonishment, bewunderung. Then one reaches the stage of astonishment, vajjitri. And that awakens transcendental madness. Udgurna and Chitra Jalpa are two among the many divisions of transcendental madness. So only in bhakti philosophy do we have many different kinds of transcendental madness. Verse 17. One day, while he was resting, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dreamed he saw Krishna performing the performing the Raza, his Raza dance. Verse 18. Sri Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw Lord Krishna standing with his beautiful body curved in three places, holding his flute to his lips wearing yellow garments and garlands of forest flowers, he was enchanting even to Cupid. 19. The gopis were dancing in a circle, and in the middle of that circle, Krishna, the son of Maharaj Nanda, danced with Radharani. So, you want to say this one? I, I say. Yes. Actually, this is also, you know, very interesting. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dreams Rasa dance. So, this, we see this bus, bus 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is position of seer, like Manjari. He did not join it. Just seeing for a little far, far away, you know. Oh, Krishna is in the center. Radha, the Krishna is in the center. Hmm. What is this Gurudev explained to us once, devotee asked him to explain about Rasalila, how Srimati Radhika, what she is doing, what is happening in Rasalila. And he explained, ah, what Manjari is doing. He explained, what devotee asked, what is Manjari doing in Rasalila? And he told, he replied, they completely concentrate on these two, on Srimati Radhika and Krishna. They not see others. Hmm. They consider, and, and, and he told, also explained, the gopis not see Radha and Krishna. They see them sell with Krishna. But here Mahaprabhu sees Radha and Krishna. Thank you. He not see, sees like, yes, he's not Gopi, he's not Radha, he's not Krishna. Who else? So, so we feel, you know, this is Manjari's, see, Manjari's position, Mahaprabhu's watching. So this is interesting, you know, mm. point. Verse 20. Seeing this, Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu was overwhelmed with the transcendental mellow of the Rasa dance, and he thought, now I am with Krishna in Vrindavan. 
Now, this I don't know if you were with us when we were reading the Lapa Kusmanjari, verse 35, yesterday, with Tarun Baba's help. But you have the same thing going on here. You have Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu, who is actually Krishna and Radharani, watching Krishna dance with Radharani. So, as Tarun Baba said yesterday, you have to have two brains to think this thought. It's either schizophrenia or it's something very, very magical. So, if you read this and your head goes, hmm, what's happening here? You're right. Huh? You know, this bus, say, bus 20, is not Manjari Baba. This, it seems, uh, uh, this I, how can I understand if Chaitanya thinking so I'm Radha? Also, we can think. Also, if I become Gopi, also we can understand this one. This one is not clear, but uh, it's, we can say this 20, but it's 18th, 19th, we can say Manjari, but this is, this is not Manjari. We started from one point, how Mahaprabhu going deep. First, he, he receiving her moods, Srimati Radhika's mood, and then he started to himself think, I am Radha. And here also, first he sees Radha and Krishna. Now he's back out. No, now he is going uh, inside of this cycle, and now he is thinking, I am Radha with Krishna. For what? It's Ah. Uh, also, when it's now I am with Krishna, it's Radharani speaking. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It was before it was written, before. So now it truly is Manjari Bhav. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 1890s, it seems uh, Manjari Bhav, no? But uh, this 20 is like a lot of mood. Again, up here. Okay, yes, we agree. Yeah. Yes. Verse 21, when Govinda saw that the Lord had not yet risen, he awakened him. Understanding that he had only been dreaming, the Lord was somewhat unhappy. Aha, it was a dream, a hallucination. Verse 22, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, performed his customary daily duties and at the usual time he went to see Lord Jagannath in the temple. 23. As he viewed Lord Jagannath from behind the Garuda column, hundreds and thousands of people in front of him were seeing the deity. 24. Suddenly, a woman from Orissa, unable to see Lord Jag Jagannath because of the crowd, climbed the column of Garuda, placing her foot on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's shoulder. I have a question. Why Mahaprabhu? I have a question. Why Mahaprabhu standing? behind of Garuda's stamp or column, not just before Thakurji, but from some distance, before him, hundreds and thousands of people, is my question. Why is he standing behind the column, is the question. Not such a way. If he has so much love, Krishna, why not coming close? Why? From some distance, alone, before him, so many devotees. Humility. Yeah, like I like I say, now biggest temple and many people there. So, like a material speaking, you know, many people. So he has to go back. This is material answer. But the spiritual answer may be Chaitanya Map become Radha's mood. Radha's very uh, 
humble and uh, very and uh, chaste, very soft, so very shy. So you know, like I say, you know, Radharani cannot see like this. Radharani said, mm. <laughs> you know, like like you know, tree, you know, this hiding. You know, and little bit, you know, seeing like if say if if some yeah yeah like this my you mm -hmm. know my yoga shakti did like yeah. if I love somebody yeah. and many people there I cannot say like you know we we cannot see like directly we little bit you know like you know hiding and you know like mm -hmm. like this so therefore like uh, Mahaprabhu maybe this Garuda stamba. A little bit, you know, kind of say, like a tree. yeah, like a tree, you know, and you know, sometimes too ecstatic become like a show up, but you know, yeah. sometimes from beginning a little shy, and then so ecstatic, then become dancing, like you know, can possible, but from beginning, you know, we are very shy. This is my you know, feeling. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, I have one more idea why he's standing behind Ugarunda Stamba. I accept what you told, but I think so many moods in Shemati Radhika's heart, and one of the moods is ex um, expressed in the pages of Chitay and Charitamrita, Shemati Radhika, by feeling love for Krishna so much, for her it's her wealth, it's, uh, the, it's everything for her. And she's thinking, how possible we live without love for Krishna. How possible? She's thinking, what's the need of the eyes which is couldn't see the Krishna is love? What's the need of ears which is couldn't hear his voice? What's the need of his body where is no love for him? It's just a burden. Mm. It's it's very strong words here in Chitan Charitamrita. And now who has such a mood? So be compassion to ours who have not. Please come and look on my beloved, like this. He's so high, more than two meters. If he stand in front, our students see. It's so one reason. I, I, I completely agree with what told. Uh, for me, it's very yeah. interesting what, uh, yeah. and, and very pleasurable and sweet what he thought. But I think this also can be right there. Uh, yeah, Mahaprabhu actually very tall, like, uh, you know, two meters high. And uh, generally speaking, Indian people is not so high. Yeah. That's maybe true, you know. Indian people usually, you know, some is very high, but usually not so, you know, high. Small India is, you know, is many. And Mahaprabhu maybe two meter high, you know, very big personality. So he he could see, but. Uh, You mentioned that uh, because of uh, he want to hide or something. Rade, Rade. Yeah, he, he yes. understands the value of prema so much. It's giving everything to him, and now he looks at all these people and thinking, if for me like this, what's the need? How possible to live without prema? And he wants to give to ours. We know about two types of reason of appearance of Mahaprabhu, yeah. internal and external. Internal is his own, internal for ours. This is mean, why he's standing where? We also can explain from this point of view, two types of reason, internal, what you explain, and external. Material and spiritual. Rade. Rade, Rade, uh, yes, Kovinda from Switzerland. There is also another meaning no, why he stands. Not the one. <laughs> no. Good to be in you know, a many. No. Well, it's always at least two, isn't it? It's always at least material and spiritual. Yeah. Answer. Okay, two, material and spiritual. True. But sometimes more. You know? Yes. When I told external means, but what does he want to do to ours? Um, it's written in Chinese. It's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita about two types of reason why he appeared. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Premaras, Niryas, Korite, Aswadan. He came to relish the Premaras. This is internal reason, his own reason, his own motivation. And Raga Marga, Bhakti Loki, Kariti Pracharan. 
he came to show the souls of Kali Yuga, the way for Raga Bhakti. This is external reason, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, there was one devotee from Switzerland who wanted to share. Another exclamation is Garbastamba. <laughs> You hear me, eh? At least yes, you need I to. hear you, but maybe they don't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, do you hear coming. me or not? Radhe? For any feelings, we need object with particular quality. Udava, you hear us? To get prema, you need Krishna prema. You need Krishna yeah. as an object. Krishna yeah, if you, Udava. it's written, Krishna is telling the Bhagavad Gita by looking on the object. Gradually, attachment. <laughs> I think they don't hear us, Govinda. They have another. Uh, gradually, okay. Concentrated, they become karma. <laughs> in this way, in this context, we try to say something, Uda, but you well. don't hear us. Wait a minute, just a minute. I can't quite hear you. Yeah. If they will not see Krishna, can you, can you hear us? Then how they get prema? No, we lost our speaker. Just a moment. What is why he is standing in such a way what he is alone to ours to see? Ours to see. Yeah, because he goes so high, so close. He's staying just in front of him. So many beyond of him. I thought you were waving just because you were happy. You'll not be happy. No, there's one devotee from Switzerland, Govinda Das. He wanted to share something. Now you're muted. Ist das Video nicht an? Ja. Brauche ich aber nicht. Ade, Ade. Oder aber hörst du uns? Du, du, du hast stumm geschaltet, oder was? Du bist stumm. Now you're muted, oder was? Muted. Stummschaltung. Mach mal dein Mikro an. Jetzt? Nee. Ja. No problem. We cannot hear you now or when you speak and this devotee from Switzerland you cannot hear him either. No problem. Okay, now I hear you again. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. And okay. Govinda Das? <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, I hear you. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So go ahead. Sorry, but now yeah. we've lost uh, the picture. Okay, just, just small other meaning. Why he yes. stands close to Karuda? I heard this. I, I, I think it's from Prabhupada that, um, that he stands very close to pure devotee, that he gets seen by Krishna. Because Krishna yeah. sees his pure devotees, so Prabhu um, Goranga is very humble and he stands very close to pure devotees, so he gets seen by Krishna. Radhe. Nice. Thank very you. Interesting. Very yeah. nice. I'd also like to quote. Thank you. Possible? Yeah. Please. So, for me, uh, because of the last verse, Uh, 35, we could see that Mahaprabhu is in different moods. Yeah. He's uh, relishing uh, Manjari bath and also sometimes he is in uh, Mahabhav and sometimes he is also feeling as Krishna. So I think we have to find out, maybe if it's possible, in which mood he is or was when he entered this temple then maybe we can find out why he is behind the, the pillar. Hmm. Any idea? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Like, uh, so, Ishta Deva is there, and say, Lord Jagannath Ishta Deva. So if Mahaprabhu become Radha's mood, maybe, you know, it's both, both meaning. Like, uh, he, be she become shy. Yeah. 
and also become very ecstatic also. And like, you know, hearing food, you know, and also if, if we don't know, but if it's manjarism, <laughs> This also, we don't know the situation, you know, or oh, Krishna is there and, you know, this little bit of hiding, you know, we, we, we want to see what he's doing or oh, he's meditating and chanting rade rade, you know, might be possible also. So, but this is very difficult to say, but the someone yeah. who is, you know, like you, like, Someone who is in very stai baba, he may see like this. Oh no, Mahabha is manjari, you know, manjari watching Krishna, you know, or what is he doing? He's roasting in his, he lost the way or he just went to, you know, you know, some gopis, you know, place, you know, that's also possible. Yes, but yes. It is difficult to, you know, say. Yes, but both is uh, <coughs> possible. If if he is in the mood of a manjari, he will not uh, uh, become an active role. He is checking or she is checking the situation. What is Krishna doing out of Vrindavan? What is he doing here? Why he is here? <laughs> so he is checking the situation. Wow, this is this is manjari. You know, someone who is stuck can't see like this. You know? Not yes, <laughs> that he is. He is no. And maybe then he, uh, she can uh, inform also Radhika about the situation. We don't know this exactly, but maybe in the scriptures we can find uh, uh, some hint uh, why the situation is like this. Or even when Radhika, when he is in the mood of Radhika, maybe uh, he felt a long time of separation. And even in this mood, uh, she will not enter so often. You can imagine if, if you have a boyfriend and you saw them a long time, not, and you come suddenly, you will not make him uh, too big surprise. So first you check, what is he doing? Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Yeah. So I think we, find, we will find it out. Uh, when we enter the mood of uh, of Chaitanya, and when we find out in which mood he entered this temple, actually we don't need to find out. That is that's matter of Baba. How can we see if mm -hmm. someone who is you know Manjari style Baba and can see the Manjari position? That I feel, you know. I mean, it's. I agree really strongly. It's very interesting. It's very important that the mystery stay, um, uh, Gaura. I think that uh, yeah. that the different sides of the the loving experience are are happening and also contradicting each other. That this is part of the above. Yeah, but uh, you know, you are shy, so you 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 could see it like this. You know, this is very you know very amazing for us, and we also we we learn all. <laughs> I don't know. Stai doesn't mean that everything fixes, everything frozen. Yeah, it, everything. Stai you know, means a basis for watching movement. see the kind of manjari point of view. So this is Stai. So therefore, someone who is Stai Baba, he may see, oh, manjari, you know, manjari is looking how manjari should be look this is interesting also uh gora sundara Prabhu, i just uh, came to conclusion what if i have choice to meditate on two things external and internal reasons for beast high it's much more important internal reasons the mood of shimati radhika he means he, his own motivation of mahaprabhu Yeah. So, if so, this is point. So, how Mahapa, you know, how Mahaprabhu's Baba, how can we see Mahaprabhu's Radha's mood or Krishna's mood or Manjari's mood? So, this is uh, according to our, you know, Baba, San, who is Sanchari or uh, who is uh, Stai, and also this is also. Sometimes difficult to say which one is, you know, which. 
But uh, it's a very good point. Interesting point for me. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. According to the Acharyas, <coughs> Rupa, Raghunath, Rupa, and uh, what is the what they say about this point? Um, because which point? Uh, what is Mahaprabhu experiencing as uh, Radhabhav, No, but you, what I understanding is like uh, you are mentioned that we don't know what what Mahaprabhu experiencing. Maybe uh, <coughs> Radha, Gopi, Manjari. So, and according uh, what you, what I hear from you is according to everybody, uh, stay above. No, we we'll, we'll see that. But what was the position of the uh, Rupa Ragunad in this regard? You know, yesterday, yesterday we are talking about Virapak Manjali bus 35. Yesterday or day before yesterday? Uh, yeah, yesterday. Yes. Maybe yesterday. Yes. Yesterday we are reading Virapak Manjali, you know, uh, 35 bus. Then Anandas Baba means. We, we consider follow of Rupa Ragunata. He told, he, 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 he wrote in Chaitan Charita Murita, in Manjari Baba, Mahaprabhu say, Manjari Baba is chapter 14, Ancharira, and Ancharira chapter 18. He mentioned two bus. Yeah. So we are leading According to his, his, his conclusion. So, okay, let us see, let, let us check what 14 bars mentioned. So, therefore, Rupa Ragnata told, uh, not told, Rupa Ragnata uh, may not mention clearly or may wrote clearly, but the Mahaprabhu is expressed Radha Baba. Also, he want to, he want to taste other people to taste. Like a Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Charitamrita said, at first Mahaprabhu taste this love of God. That means Radha Baba. And then he want to other people to taste. This is Manjari Baba. So, in this, if you like, you can check Virapaksman 35 and this mentions which part is Mahaprabhu Express Manjari Baba. So, we are now leading and we want to, we want to, for say, uh, we want to more go deep in this bus. That's what now we are doing, try to, try to do it. But let's also remember on verse 22, what we already read. No, 18. No, no, yeah. But in 22, it says that uh, the, the taking darshan of Jagannath was his daily custom. It wasn't anything exceptional or special that day of being out of Vrindavan. He went, he went there every day as part of his routine, it says. At the usual time, he went to see Lord Jagannath. Yeah, because, because uh, you know, like uh, Ishtadeva, Mahaprabhu, yes, yes. you know, Lord Jagannath. As, yeah, you know, as Radharani, as Radharani, see, Lord is Shamasundra. Mm. So, but generally speaking, Mahaprabhu's Baba is Radha Baba. Generally speaking. But some place explain Manjari Baba. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, top secret, honestly. Because, you know, to know the which one is Manjari Baba? We have to know more detail. Which is Gopi Baba? Which is Saki Baba? Which is Manjari Baba? Which Baba is like, uh, you know, Bishamasneha? Or which is like Samasneha? Means Sanchari Baba. Which is Manjari Baba, Sai Baba? We have to discriminate. If we don't know these three Baba, then we cannot discriminate. So therefore, from beginning, I have read, you know, a few times, Chaitanya and Charita, but at that time, I could not understand it. But after studying, after hearing Radha Rasa Rasa Nidhi Manjari, we could, 
we could see which one is Manjari Baba and which one is you know Gopi Baba or Sanchari Baba. This is interesting. This point we have to know it. Because many devotees does not understand this, you know, Stai Baba and Sanchari Baba, we could not uh, discriminate. Most devotees, they don't know what is Raga Bhakti, what is, you know, you know Raga Bhakti, Bhakti Bhakti, they may know, but uh, they cannot describe, you know, what is Sanchari Baba, what is Stai Baba. Because we must take care of more how I am there, which is the first way of it. Yes, but what kind of love? Krishna Prema is very deep, you know, because Prema is another seven kinds of Prema is there, you know, Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Raga, Anuraga, Baba, Mahababa. And then again, Again, you know, it's, it's Gopi Baba, Saki Baba, Manjari Baba. So, you know, Krishna's Kapitaj Goswami say, like, uh, you know, distribute Prema. But what kind of Prema? He here mentioned Chaitanya Chaitanya, Unna to no other age, no other incarnation, never give to this love of God. And then, what? Because Saki Baba is there, you know, Jayadeva Goswami mentioned Saki Baba, uh, <coughs> and uh, Biruba Mangara Thakur describes Gopi Baba. You know, in Bhagatam, um, Shriti, Shriti, like, you know, better personify, they, they want to also become Gopi. Nami Sharanya's Say they want to become Gopi. So Gopi Baba is there. Some Saki Baba is there. But Mahaprabhu want to give any other age, any other incarnation does not give. He want to give first time. This is Manjari Baba. So that means he want to receive Prema, but not the ordinary Prema. This is Manjari Baba. So therefore, this morning, uh, one devotee come and uh, <laughs> asking, you know, some, uh, you are there, you know, at that time, say, Guru Dev say, you know, some devotee thinking, Prabhupada is Prabhupada, Prabhupada is like that, you know, uh, sa, you know, Saka, Saka Baba. Friend of Krishna, and then Gurudev said, It's not, it's not Mahaprabhu, it's not Mahaprabhu want to give, it's not Rupanuga. Because Rupanuga means Manjari Because Sakabhava is previous also there. Probably. <laughs> but Manjari Baba, no. Like the Brahma is in Sakya Baba. Lord Brahma is in Sakya Baba. This I'm not sure. May be or may not be. Because usually... I think Brahma is not above at all. You know, because, because Brahma is different kind of Brahma. Because, you know, in Prabhupada mentioned someone who has realized Brahman also is there. Someone, someone who realized Bhagavan also is there. Some, some Brahman is literally materially, you know, materialist, like, you know, literally, literally the karma kind, you know, little bit kind of, many kinds of Brahman. So, Brahman is, we cannot say one word, but Brahma is usually say he realized he want to be, he want to become any living entity. No, he wants to become. Hmm? So, well, which is used by living, so it's sweeping and cleaning. 
Yeah, I'm coming to the house. And at that time, Brahma mentioned, I think, Bhagavatam 14th chapter. At that time, Brahma said, I want to be, I forgot the past, the other past. You know, like Brahma want to step out of any living entity. Means, means, according to Bhagavatam, Brahma's rasa is like a more or less neutral. Because he did not say, I it, want to step out of Saka. It's impersonal. You know, more or less like a kind of neutral. But the Uddhava's case, Uddhava, he, 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 associ he associated with Radharani. And then, I want to become grass, which gopi, the gopi, huh? uh, according to Narayan Maharaj. Radharani may step on my head, my grass. I want, in that grass I want to be. But in Brahma's case, any residence, any people can step out my, my head. So that means Brahma is not Sakya Baba, my, my understanding. It's more or less neutral. Um, Shalami, the Samaraj explained about this. Um, explain what his desire after all was to become a stone stone yeah that stone which is lying in front of entrance to the house of simple lady who is sleeping in Vrindavan uh -huh. and then she's returned to her ho home she's just cleaning her feet about of, by using the stone and how his desire was fulfilled yoga maya gave him position in varshana a swiss mountain Oh. Lord Shiva become mountain in uh, Nanda Gaon. Yeah. He served Krishna's community. Lord Brahma served Shimatiradika's community, in Vrishabhanu community. We live in Shimatiradika. Yeah. Rather. Yeah, it, interesting. But a different kind of Brahma there, no? So Shiva become Nanda Gaon, means, uh, you know, Nandishwara stone. And the Brahma become like uh, Barishana's stone, okay. mountain. So anyway, this point is, I don't know really, but according to, you know, uh, Bhagatam, my I feel it more or less neutral position. And Uttabha's case, he attached Gobi, especially Radharani. But uh, we, we are not sure he, 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 he could give up his knowledge because he's, he's a Jnana Mishra Bhakta. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he has so much knowledge because uh, the side of Brihaspati. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I know. So this is me. No, so, sorry. Verse 25. Okay. When he saw this, so when he saw the this woman, Arisa, standing on the shoulder of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's personal servant, Govinda, hastily got her down from her position. She, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, however, chastised him for this. And Prabhupada comments, Be because Garuda is the carrier of Lord Vishnu, he is the supreme Vaishnava. Therefore, to touch his body with one's feet or to climb the column of Garuda is certainly a Vaishnava aparada, an offense to Vaishnava. The woman was also offensive to Krishna by putting her foot on the shoulder of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing all these offenses, Govinda very hastily made her get down. Verse 26. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Govinda, O Adi Vaishya, uncivilized man, do not forbid this woman to climb the Garuda Stamba, the column. Let her see Lord Jagannath to her satisfaction. 
This is the kind of vision of this is this is the vision of say like Raga from love. Because uh, uh, this Govinda's case, he follow rule and regulation. But the Mahaprabhu beyond rule and regulation. So he appreciate this lady's is 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 desire greed greed. You know, so Mahabhu said, Oh, the, she he had so much good deed to see, you know, Lord Jagannatha. I don't have it. Mahabhu feel like this. This this is a symptom of someone who attained a uh, pre prema. Of course, the Lord has already prema. Generally, the lady have natural quality of Laja, shyness. They couldn't behave like this. It this means so much eagerness, so much charity to see. All right, how it possible to explain? And also, Mahaprabhu is tall. <laughs> she was climbing over here. It's amazing. amazing. Verse 27. When the woman came to her senses, however, she quickly climbed back down to the ground. And seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, immediately begged at his lotus feet for forgiveness. So she was not being herself. Mm. She was in a ecstatic mood. Verse 28. Seeing the woman's eagerness, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Lord Jagannath has not bestowed so much eagerness upon me. Mm. So this unknown woman is greater than he is in terms of greed and Raga. Prabhupada, com Prabhupada comments now. The woman was so eager to see Lord Jagunath that she forgot she was offending the feet of a Vaishnava by climbing the column of Garuda. She also neglected to consider that by putting her foot on the shoulder of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she offended the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These are both grievous offenses that displease the Supreme Lord and Vaishnavas. She was so eager to see Lord Jagannath, however, that she committed all these offenses, obviously. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu praised her eagerness. He regretted that Lord Jagunath had not bestowed such eagerness on him. So it's the greed alone which is virtuous in the eyes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not the offense, not the offense of standing on the shoulder. Verse 29. Um, alas, oh sorry, she has fully absorbed her body, mind, and life in Lord Jagunath. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking. Therefore, she was unaware that she was putting her foot on my shoulder. So this may be not to directly connect. In Dasada, Radharani or, or some group of Radharani can uh, step on Krishna's foot, but uh, they don't care. But the Chandra bodies or Chandra group, they so much care not to step, step on Krishna's feet. Because Radharani and Krishna thinking, oh, we are one. She does not care. Yes, my yeah, your feet is my feet. But Chandravari was thinking, you know, your, your feet, your feet, your feet is divine. And some kind of oven and devanet is still a little bit there. But in Radharani's case, you are mine. Kind of mood is there, like Mamata. So, 
anyways, this lady was so much, so much eagerness, and she does not aware this is the thing. Mm. Verse 13. Alas, how fortunate this woman is. This is still uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking about this unknown woman. It's quite remarkable. How fortunate this woman is. I pray at her feet that she favor me. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking now to this unknown woman. I pray at her feet that she favor me with her eagerness to see Lord Jagannath. Wow. That's humility. Yeah, this is vision of Paramahansa. This is vision of Premi Bhakta. Hmm? Like Gurudev, you know. Like Gurudev begging the mercy from the disciple and praying, you know. <laughs> because they are now, what you say, trying to absorb and the mood of Narada. I can remember. I can, I can remember from Srimad Bhagavatam how Srimad Radhika in separation with Krishna, mm -hmm. she is thinking about the fortune of ours. For example, girls can co come close to Krishna, friends come close to Krishna, everyone, but not I am. Means, you know, except to me, except everybody <laughs> devotee, you know, very advanced devotee, but not. To, we, I'm not a devotee. I'm most fallen soul. Like, Radha is thinking like this. Like most greatest person is he's thinking, oh, I'm lowest and others highest. In her meditation, she sees how pulling the girl, taking this kunkuma from the grass, and smell the old bodies. And she's thinking, oh, how they are so fortunate. Not thinking even. It, Little bit, not remember what this kunkuma, which just came from lotus feet of Krishna, actually came from her breast. Completely, actually, she is the most close to Krishna. She is, but now she is thinking, "Oh, they all so fortunate." This is the video of Paramahansa and Premi. <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has just praised this woman. And now we continue with the verse 31. Just previously, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been seeing Lord Jagannath as Krishna, the son of Maharaj Nanda, in person. 32. Becoming fully absorbed in that vision, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had assumed the mood of the gopis serving Krishna. So much so that everywhere he looked, he saw Krishna standing with his flute to his lips. 33. After seeing the woman, the Lord's external consciousness returned. And he saw the original deity form of Lord Jagannath, Subhadra, and Lord Balaram. So during this episode, he's in Gopi Bhav. 34. When he saw the deities, Lord Chaitanya thought, thought he was seeing Krishna in Kurukshetra. He wondered, have I come to Kurukshetra? Where is Vrindavan? Verse 36. Lord Chaitanya grew very much agitated, like a person who has just lost a recently acquired jewel. Then he became very morose, very sad, and returned home. 36. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat down on the ground and began to mark it with his fingernails. He was blinded by tears, which flowed from his eyes like the Ganges. 
37. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I found Krishna, Lord of Vrindavan, but I have lost him again. Who has taken my Krishna? Where have I come? Still remember that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna and asking where is Krishna? Now comes a long commentary by Prabhupada. These are the feelings of Srimati Radharani. Where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? First, Lord Chaitanya felt that he had been taken to Vrindavan, where he saw Krishna's rasa dance with the gopis. Then he brought he was brought to, to Kurukshetra to see Lord Jagannath, his sister, Subhadra, and Lord Balaram. Sri she, she, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lost Vrindavan and Krishna, the master of Vrindavan. At this time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu experienced Divyonamada, transcendental madness in separation from Krishna. This is the highest Manjari Bhav. This is Zara Bhav. At Kurukshetra, Krishna displays his opulence, whereas in Vrindavan, he is in his original position. Krishna never goes even a step away from Vrindavan. Therefore, Kurukshetra is less important for the gopis than Vrindavan. So when he imagines himself in Kurukshetra, then he's in Krishna above. When he's in Vrindavan, then he's in Radha above, so to speak. Prabhupada continues. Although the devotees, although devotees who worship Krishna in opulence as a king, his Vaikunda aspect, although these may prefer to see Lord Krishna at Kurukshetra along with Subhadra and Balaram, the gopis want to see Krishna in Vrindavan. They want to dance with him, don't they? Performing the Rasa dance with Sri Mati Radharani. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed by practical example how one can cultivate the mood of Radharani and the other gopis in separation from Krishna. Devotees absorbed in this mood do not like to see Krishna anywhere else but Vrindavan. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lamented, saying, I've found Krishna in Vrindavan, and now I've lost him again, and come to Kurukshetra. Unless, says Prabhupada, unless one is a very highly advanced devotee, one cannot understand these intri intricate feelings. The author of Chaitanya Charitamita, however, has tried to explain this Divyun Madha, this transcendental madness, as far as possible. And it is our duty, we as devotees, simply to appreciate it as far as possible. Therefore, the author has made the following request in verse 1. And he quotes verse 1. My dear readers, simply try to hear this description with faith and love. That will help you understand transcendental ecstasy. And at last you will achieve love of Godhead very easily. So we must not try to reason it out with our logical, philosophical minds. We must try to see it through our loving eyes and to feel it and feel this madness that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is feeling when uh, he's in Krishna Bhav and then Radha, Radha Bhav and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it's really, really
he's written interesting thing what uh, i think it's important to understand my dear readers simply try to hear this description with faith and love love and yes. then he's telling you will receive what love of godhead very easily who can answer yeah so this is Krishna Dasaka Kaviraja, the author of Chaitanya Charitamra, who is speaking and saying, don't try too hard with your brains. Make sure you put your hearts into it to get the farthest. Text 38. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dreamed of the Rasa dance, he was fully absorbed in transcendental bliss. But when his dream broke, he thought he had lost a precious jewel. 39. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would chant and dance, always absorbed in the bliss of transcendental madness. He carried out the necessities of the body, such as eating and bathing, merely out of habit. Where he really was, where he truly was, was in this position of transcendental madness. Verse 40, at night, Lord Chaitanya would re reveal to Svarupa Dhammudara and Ramananda Rai, the ecstatic feelings of his mind. Verse 41, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, At first my mind somehow achieved the treasure of Krishna, but it again lost him. Therefore, it gave up my body, my mind gave up my body. And home body and home because of lamentation, and it accepted, my mind, the religious principles of Kapalika Yoga. Then my mind went to Vrindavan with its disciples, my senses. And Prabhupada adds a comment, this verse is clearly metaphorical. So it's not literally what is factually happening. It's like a, a feeling, a representation, an image from his mind. Verse 42. Having lost his acquired gem, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with lamentation by remembering its attributes. Then, grasping the next, sorry, the next, the next of Ramananda Rai and Swarupa Damodar Goswami, he cried, Alas, where is my Lord Hari? Where is Hari? Finally, he became restless and lost all patience. Verse 43, my dear friends, he said, please hear of Krishna's sweetness. Because of a great desire for that sweetness, my mind has given up all social and Vedic religious principles and taken to the profession of begging, exactly like a, a mystic yogi. Only because he wants this sweetness, he only wants the feeling, the love, that he can associate with Krishna, with Radhamon. Verse 44. The ring of Krishna's Rasalila, manufactured by Sukadeva Goswami, the most auspicious craftsman, is as pure as an earring made from conch shell. The yogi of my mind is wearing that earring upon his ear. From a gourd, he has carved out the bowl of my aspirations. 
and he has taken the bag of my expectations on his shoulder. Verse 45. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continues to speak. The yogi of my mind wears the torn quilt of anxiety and his dirty body, which is covered with dust and ashes. So he's using all these bits of clothing and ornaments, earring and, and a bowl to represent his emotions. The clothing and the ornaments become emotions themselves. He continues, his only words are, Alas, Krishna. He wears 12 bangles of distress on his wrist and a turban of greed on his head. Because he has not eaten anything, he is very thin. Verse 46, he continues to speak. The great yogi of my mind always studies the poetry and the discussions of Lord Chaitanya's Vrindavan pastimes. Poetry. Uh, poetry, it's the pastimes are there to give us feeling, to give us emotions. In Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures, great saintly yogis like Vyasadeva, Shukadeva Goswami have described Lord Krishna as the super soul beyond all material contamination. Verse 47 The mystic yogi of my mind has assumed the name Mahabola and made disciples of my ten senses. Thus my mind has gone to Vrindavan, leaving ahead aside the home of my body and the great treasure of material enjoyment. So the, his mind, his feelings, emotions take the form of disciples who, who then go to Vrindavan. So that his, his emotions have actually traveled to Vrindavan. Prabhupada comments, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu compares his mind to one of the mystic yogis known as Paulas, who make at least ten disciples. Verse 48. In Vrindavan, he goes from door to door, begging alms with all his disciples. He begs from both the moving and the inert inhabitants. Hmm. The citizens, the trees, and the creepers. In this way, he lives on fruits, roots, and leaves. 49. The gopis of Rajabhumi always taste the nectar of Krishna's attributes, his beauty, his sweetness. His aroma, the sound of his flute, and the touch of his body. My mind's five disciples, the senses of perception, gather the remnants of the nectar from the gopis and bring them in the yogi of my mind. The sense, senses maintain their lives by eating those remnants. It's just beautiful and poetic. His senses become the disciples that go out and gather in the beauty of the world. The sounds and the smells and the tastes. That's how he visits the world, through his disciples, the senses. He continues in verse 50. There's a solitary garden where Krishna enjoys his pastimes. Well, none of you want to translate oh, it's so late. Sure, just a moment. I'll put you.
So if any, anybody wants Japanese, there's now Japanese translation for the last uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. Verse 50. The, this sort of soliloquy, this speech continues, this beautiful speech continues. There is a solitary garden where Krishna enjoys his pastimes. And in one corner of a pavilion in that garden, the yogi of my mind, along with his disciples, the disciples of my mind, practices mystic yoga. Wanting to see Krishna directly, this yogi remains awake throughout the night, meditating on Krishna, who is the super soul, uncontaminated by the three modes of nature, the three gunas. Verse, six, verse 60, he continues, when my mind lost the association of Krishna and could no longer see him, he became depressed, my mind became depressed, and took up mystic yoga in the void of separation from Krishna. He experienced 10 transcendental transformations. <clears throat> Agitated by these transformations, my mind fled, leaving my body, his place of residence empty. Then I am completely in trance. <laughs> then I'm going, yeah. Could I have some water? Water? You need water. Just a little Sure. sure. Then Prabhupada comments. In this verse, the outward activities of Kapalika, mendicants, the beggars, have been described, but not in their actual life. The Kapalika mendicants are tantric materialists who carry skulls in their hands. They are not Vaishnavas and have nothing to do with spiritual life. Therefore, they are untouchable. Only an outward comparison has been made between the mind and their activities, but their behavior should never be imitated. So only on the spiritual plane should these be understood and followed. Verse 52. When the gopis felt separation from Krishna, they, exp they experienced ten kinds of bodily transformations. These same symptoms appeared in the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Verse 53. The ten bodily transformations resulting from separation from Krishna are anxiety, wakefulness, mental agitation, thinness, uncleanliness, talking like a madman, disease, madness, illusion, and death. And Prabhupada has a very long comment now, really explaining this whole sequence of the, the hallucination of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, this verse is part of a description of Srimati Radharani's Radirani, different traits from Ujvala Nilamani, from Rupa Goswami. In this book, he elaborately explains the ten symptoms as follows. The ten um, 
symptoms of separation. Chinta, anxiety. As stated in Hamshad uh, Dutta, this is now Rupa Goswami speaking, at Akrura's request, Krishna and Balaram left the house of Nanda Maharaj for Mathura. At that time, the mind of Srimati Radharani was disrupted, and she became almost mad because of extreme separation from Krishna. She experienced great mental pain and agitation, which caused her to drown in mental speculation in the river of anxiety, chinta. She thought, now I'm going to die. And when I die, Krishna will surely come back to see me again. But when he hears of my death from the people of Vrindavan, he will certainly be very unhappy. Therefore, therefore, I shall not die. This is the explanation of the word chinta. Then, jagara, wakefulness. As stated in Padyavali, thinking herself very unfortunate, Srimati Radharani addressed her very dear friend, Vishtaka, saying, My dear friend, if I could see Krishna in my dreams, I would certainly be glorified for my great fortune. But what can I do? Sleep also plays mischievously with me. I can't sleep. Indeed, it has become my enemy. Therefore, I have not slept since the departure of Krishna. The third emotion, Udvega, mental agitation. This word is explained, says Prabhupada, in the Hamshadutta, as follows. Srimati Radharani addressed Lalita. My beautiful, my dear beautiful face, Lalita, I can ex cannot express how my heart is burning. It is a great unfathomable ocean of anxiety. Still, I wish to offer my obeisances to your lotus feet. What shall I do? Please consider my condition and advise me how I can become peaceful. That is my desire. <coughs> Tanava, thinness, is described as follows. When Uddhava returned to Mathura after visiting Vrindavan, Lord Krishna inquired from him about Radharani and Vishakha. Uddhava replied as follows, Consider the condition of the gopis. Srimati Radharani especially is in a very painful condition because of separation. Separation from you. She has grown skinny and her bodily luster is almost gone. Her heart is immersed in pain. And because she has given up eating, her breasts have become black, as if diseased. Because of separation from you, all the gopis, especially Radharani, appear like dried up water holes under the scorching heat of the sun. Mal Malina Angata, uncleanliness, is described as follows. Uddhava said to Krishna, O oh, most auspicious Krishna, please hear me. The tribulation caused by your absence has, ma has made Vishaka languid. Her lips 
tremble like trees in a strong wind. Her beautiful face is like a lotus flower that has withered under the snow, and her eyes are like lotus petals scorched by the heat of the autumn sun. Pralapa, man talking, is explained in the Lalite, Lalita Madhava as follows. This is Srimati Radharani's lamentation for her beloved Krishna, who was away from home. A woman whose husband has left home and gone to a foreign land is called Aprosita Bara. Bar Bartrika, lamenting for Krishna in the same way that such a woman laments for her husband. Shimati Radharani said, My dear friend, where is the glory of the family of Maharaj Nanda, who wears a half moon ornament on his head? Where is Krishna, whose hue is like that? of Indra, Indranila jewel, and who plays so nicely on his flute. Where is your friend, the best of all men, so expert in dancing in the circle of the rasa dance? Where is he, who is the real medicine to save me from dying of heart disease? I must condemn providence, for he has caused me so many tribulations by separating me from Krishna. Viadi, disease, it is also described in the Lalita Madhava. Being greatly afflicted by pain, by the pain of separation from Krishna, Srimati Radharani said, My dear Lalita, kindly hear me. I cannot bear suffering the fever of separation from Krishna, nor can I explain it to you? It is something like gold melting in an earthen box. This fever produces more distress than poison, and it is more piercing than a thunderbolt. I suffer exactly like someone almost dead from cholera. To be giving me, to be giving me so much pain, this fever must be strong. Indeed, Unmada, madness, is explained as follows. Uddhava said to Krishna, My dear Krishna, all the gopis are afflicted by your absence, that they have become almost mad. They're so afflicted they have become almost mad. O Murari, at home, Sri Radharani, Sri Mati Radharani, la laughs unnecessarily and like a mad woman, inquires about you from every entity without distinction and from the, and from the stones themselves, themselves. She rolls on the ground, unable to bear the agony of your absence. And finally, no, not finally, <laughs> two more, Moha illusion is explained as follows. Lalita wrote Krishna the following letter as Lalita wrote Krishna the following letter on Srimati Radharani's behalf. My dear Krishna, Srimati Radharani has fallen unconscious on the ground. Her mind, greatly agitated by her separation, from you. O oh, enemy of Kamsa, you have now become a first-class politician, and therefore you can supposedly give relief to everyone. Therefore, please consider the plight of Srimati Radharani, or very soon you will hear of her death. Maybe at that time you will lament, although now you are jubilant. And finally, the tenth symptom, death, is explained in the Hamsa Dutta. 
In the following letter, Lalita chastised Krishna for staying in Mathura. Simply by dancing in the circle of the Rasa dance, you attracted Srimati Radharani's love. Why are you now so indifferent to my dear friend Radharani? She's lying nearly unconscious, thinking of your pastimes. I shall determine whether she is alive by putting, putting a cotton swab under her nostrils. And if she is still living, I shall chastise her. This is it. I feel this man. This is like a, a like the more is bopi man. So uh, if we understand to 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 know Radharani and uh, uh, but uh, if we hear this one, we we may feel like a uh, gopi mama. So and and Rupa Goswami, why do they say we better to to lead the Ravana Das Goswami? Because Rupa, Rupa Goswami was was described in kind of neutral position, described you know this Baba, this Baba, this Gopi Baba. So, but uh, if we want to to to, to make Stai Baba, so Rupa Goswami is uh, sometimes uh, is uh, kind of uh, is not help to Stai Baba. Uh, this I don't know. This comment is good. I feel this like this. Mm. Um, when we are reading these verses from different Shri Rupa Goswami's uh, grandhas, uh, I felt I don't like it. Me too. I remember how Shri Rupa told to us not one, not one time, many times he told. I don't want to see as much Srimad Radhika crying in separation with Krishna. Let Krishna to cry for Srimad Radhika, not my Swami to, to Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Also, I feel, uh, so we are reading this Chaitanya Chaitanya, but uh, if it, it may be necessary, but uh, if we want to stay, to be stay, better to lead. Radhara Sasdani Di and Virabhak Manjari. I'm unsure, I'm very unsure. I mean, my, my concern about focusing so much on Stai Baba is that we lose the emotions. Mm -hmm. We lose the emotions, and this is a good example. That if we were emotionlessly fixed and excluded all these emotions of Radharani, we would feel nothing at all, we would no, just no, be frozen. No, no, no. So, this I'm saying like this. If we hear as manjari is okay, but but if we don't fix it, then we have become like a gopi baba. Means like you know, uh, we also try to think about Krishna. But this is this is Radharani expressing her love in separation in different ways. These are all the symptoms of her longing. For him, yes. You think that that's scope no. above to you? No, no, no. So, if our our Baba fix in Manjari Baba, then if we feel this this Radha's feeling, then oh, we have to console. Exactly. You know, we have to find out Mohan. It's okay. But if we are not stay Baba, and then sometimes we may think, oh, Gopis thinking like this oh no, actually i love krishna like this yes i follow you so if we're putting if we put our, ourselves in the position of radharani here then we become gopi Bhav. yes i understand exactly so so but, but if we put ourselves in a position where we actually are we're reading about this and we're feeling sadness on behalf of Yes. Radharani, then yes. we're Manjari Baba. Yes, yes. As Manjari, if we hear this, okay. But uh, if we identify like a gopi or, you know, 
and la da da ni and then we we want to we want to meet Krishna as myself is 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 the kind of gopi. But this uh, this raises a very very important question. I think how do we know the difference between feeling the identifying with the feelings of Radharani in Manjaribhav or being Radharani in Gopibhav. Yeah. We want to get so close to Radharani's feelings to serve her and help yeah. her, but there's a point where we become her yeah. and then we're gopis. Yes, this kind of like, kind of like say, a pinch of like Maya Bhattin. Yeah, impersonal. Impersonal. Yeah. And we forget to save our service. Because you know, like a gopi person, you know, of course, you know, gopi is not like a material, material enjoyment and different. But the gopi mood is, oh, I want to, you know, you know, this to be some tendency in them. Mm -hmm. But the manjani has not to, not at all this tendency. Oh, I want to serve. So this is called if someone who is fixed it is it, it, okay. But uh, if someone not to fix it and it, it become tender, you know, hard work. Our tendency to be sunshine. This I feel you know, before I don't understand. Hmm. But now you know I you know I follow you. I don't that's your feeling too. Uh, um I will channel. just add one thing is uh Shinaranga Samaraj explained to us about uh Vrishabana Nandini. She's original Shimati Radhika, whom Manjari is Surin. Shimati Radhika, whom is Manjari's surname is Vrishabhana Nandini. He told to us she had not long time of separation, little. Then uh, she, Nishantalila is happened, then both going to the house, and therefore she came into uh, Yashoda's kitchen, some separation, but not long time. And he told, who is feeling long time separation in Udavakari? What the read? Hamsaduta, two quotations from Hamsaduta in the end. Absolutely. When Valiti writing uh -huh. message to Krishna. We mm is -hmm. Radha, Shinanga Samaraj told her name is Viyogini Radha. It's expansion of original Radha. Mm -hmm. Original Radha is going with Krishna. When Krishna is disappeared, when Akrura trying to take out from Rindao and Krishna and Balaram, the original Krishna disappearing and Radha also disappearing and the expansion yeah, is right. Like, uh, like uh, you know, Bhomari, <coughs> in this material Lira is and Nitya Lira is. So Krishna Lira is two kind. Bhoma Lira, Krishna appear in this material world on the earth, Vrindavan, and he plays the pastime. And also another Lira is Nitya Lira. Eternally, eternally is, is doing Nittarira. So, I think Nara Maharaj is saying this Bomarira is sometimes rather become Biyogi. He explained to us it is expansion of Shimajara. Yeah, expansion. expansion. Manjari is from directly to Vrishabhananandini, not to her expansion. What did I want to say? Yeah, especially you know, Radha. This mean these feelings, not feelings of Rishabhan Nandini mm. or oh, Ishtadevi. Mm. It's, ex it's feelings of her expansions. What I want to say. No, yeah, yeah. That's mm. Or someone, Radha Nandini went to Kurukshetra. That that Radha Nandini is not Rishabhan Nandini, original Radha, because Radha never did Vrindavan. Or even Krishna also. You know, if someone. Krishna, you know, Matura Krishna, Dwaraka Krishna is not Nanda Nandana, not Yashoda Nandana. It's a kind of Vasudeva Krishna. So this is interesting <laughs> point. This, this is the... In, in one hand, all these feelings came from Srimati Radhika, mm. because expansion came from Srimati Radhika. But it's emphasized so much on her long time separation. I just... Mm. Uh, how to say, my glance casts one on um, uh, one of these 12 uh, or 10 quotations. Then Udova returned to Mathura after visiting Vrindava. Again, about this long time of separation. Mm. So, I think this is not uh, this is not uh, 
us to to be that kind of. A, I don't know. It's just my feeling. Yeah, I was in touch with you. Huh? It's just my feeling. I don't like it. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I also I feel this is not to you know actually to become Manjari Baba is not so good actually honestly. Hmm. That's I feel because before I could not understand you know, but if now I understand Sai Baba and Sanchari Baba and. Uh, then this Baba is not helping us. We need to ask children that you know this hard Of course, you know, you know, uh, to 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 say kind of of course Chai Tan Chai means in Chai Tan Chai Tamarita is is mixing and uh, everything. But uh, Chai Tan Chai Tamarita is not the book kind of to, to be style. Mm. That I may say. Mm -hmm. So to become style, we have to concentrate Radha Rasa Sadhani and the Bira mm -hmm. yeah. It's one thing to say that the book is not style, but, to, but this uh, description of ten different kinds of emotions of mind, uh, uh, that that can help us with monthly yeah. That's also, you know, we, yes, this also, you know, maybe uh, we may. This is that uh, this, this, you know, hearing this grief on this, you know, my mind and uh, it knows, you know, kind of, yeah, but this is not the uh, kind of uh, we want. Sorry, yeah, uh, this thing. I think we stop here. Mm -hmm. we stop here. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. 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 Jai.